43 days houseless, not homeless, living in my van in Alaska. But this is five reasons why living in a car sucks. Sucks. Five reasons. Peace and greetings. It's currently 7.15. The sun is high in the sky like it's noon. Typical Alaska craziness. I thought I would give you five reasons why living in my car sucks real fast. So number one, in no particular order, was definitely the sleeping issue. Now at first I would sleep in the back of my sedan, you know, all kind of crunched up. So I had to stop that within a week and then I started sleeping fully reclined, which wasn't too bad. Uh, I definitely had to get used to it. It's definitely doable. In any vehicle you can recline your seat back. I don't care if you're in a BMW 7 Series, you can sleep and live in that. So you definitely have to have like a nice memory foam pillow, maybe a pillow at the bottom of your feet. But yeah, it was definitely getting a little frustrating. To be honest, I used to have um, in my condo a full size, extremely luxurious, extremely memory foamed up bed. It was like sleeping in a cloud, you know, super high up off the, off the ground. I think it was probably like, I think it was definitely three to three and a half feet off the ground. You know, so now sleeping, you know, in my chair, it was really difficult. It was hard to get used to. Definitely enjoy the upgrade to van life where I can at least lay completely flat. Number two uh, was definitely the space issue. And uh, I'm talking about like being able to have other people in here, um, like moving around, basic like moving around and things. Every time I'd have to give someone a ride home from uh, the work I am employed at, every now and then, like every every other week or so, would be a huge ordeal. I'd have to make my car a complete mess uh, just to have someone get a ride. You know, so that was extremely frustrating. Uh, but you know, it really wasn't that bad. I got over it. And now having the van much more space, I definitely don't have have to worry about that issue. Number three was the cargo issue. It's a little different than the space, but it's just like basic cargo, just holding and storing stuff, especially stuff you don't use every other day. I had to really minimalize things, sacrifice a lot of things, sell a few things, just to minimalize down to what I had in my Camry. And it was still quite a lot. You know, especially when you travel with a 27 and a half uh, downhill mountain bike, you know, that takes up tons of space. Like even when you take both wheels off the frame like you have a big 27 and a half inch object times two in your vehicle so that was a little hard i definitely got over that just by trying to do the best i can um, but that would definitely be a huge issue if you're living in your car just cargo space sleeping so number four uh was the energy issue um so this is all pre-solar and still right now i'm shopping for the perfect um large solar panel but it was kind of annoying to still be on the grid um depend on charging certain places even though i do have the usb charger in my car um, i personally don't want to be using my car battery for an external uh, charger of sorts. Uh, so yeah, it was just, you know, a little frustrating in that aspect, you know, to like kind of drive out of your way and ping pong around or just kind of be stuck in shitty situations, especially with like my laptop, which adds up in gas and adds up in time. The fifth reason why living in my car really sucked had to definitely be the cold issue. And I'm pretty sure it'd go around the same lines uh, in really hot situations. I couldn't have a portable heater, you know, in my car because of the ventilation issue. That's way too small of a space. In the van, it's a little better because hopefully I could be running um, like a propane portable heater or whatever type of gas heater also be running a USB fan overnight as well to keep everything really uh, ventilated which brings back the energy issue you know because you can't use you know a USB fan or a 12 volt fan all the time especially overnight with a car you know you can't keep your car running and that's once again you're trying to find alternative and sustainable ways to uh, live your life it was definitely hard I was thankful to have my zero degree marmot sleeping bag and I didn't use any covers even when it was like the coldest, like when I went to Kenai Lake, it was negative eight uh, that morning. And that was like a little vacation trip, you know? Uh, so yeah, it was definitely difficult just to bear with it, layer up extreme. It was like even more than when I was going snowboarding. This is like, I'm going snowboarding in the back country and camping and stuff. So that was a little hard to deal with. And I know, especially if it was to be hot and still living in my car, I would have definitely had to get some sort of solar system going, but it would still be hard to just ventilate such a small bit of space. Like I, when I sleep with my windows closed, I can instantly tell, like sometimes I might forget, but I can instantly tell that the air is super thin. It really affects you. You know, your heart rate goes up, start getting a little anxious. So um, ventilation just in general uh, was a huge reason why living in a car sucks because especially when, you know, at night, you don't want to have all your windows open, you know, too much for safety reasons. Yeah, that was a little hard to deal with. 
Um, but overall, you know, it was a very good experience, but there were definitely aspects that just really sucked just living in my car. But I definitely have to remember I'm doing the best I can. Um, this was extremely spontaneous. I only had about a month, a little less than a month of research. And then the first day when I moved out of my condo, I had to jump right into it. It was negative degrees, like the first uh, two weeks or so every night. So um, I was just doing the best I can. I'm glad I survived and I survived and was able to upgrade. Um, into a beautiful new van like right around springtime today as you can see probably never seen me in a vlog wearing just a t-shirt it's about like 40 some degrees outside you know so just enjoying the sun and yeah just stick through it like with any challenging situation no matter how bad something sucks like the van life car life rv life nomadic life any type of alternative lifestyle you know it's not all glamorous you know, there's the ups and downs. I've definitely had huge down days. Definitely some days that I'm not vlogging, I'm just completely not feeling it. You know, especially if I don't upload for a day or two, you could understand I'm just not feeling it. <laughs> but uh, I'm doing the best I can. Yeah, thank you for watching and just trying to understand. You know, it's not all thumbs up, but even, you know, even the, the stuff I've explained, it's all just tests and way to assimilate and keep moving on. You know, and if I was to do this extremely long term, in the Toyota Camry, I would do it. You know, I would just have to be more and more creative, uh, do some customizing, uh, but anything's possible. Yeah, once again, thank you for watching. Stay positive, stay productive, stay progressive, and stay proactive, and you shall be blessed. Peace. I don't wanna die. Give it up. Why must you kill us? Because you kill people's children to survive. But that isn't our fault. It's not our fault either. However, we're stronger than you are. That's why you're going to die without leaving any spores. <laughs>